the season preview of the shift we are here i am ready for major league baseball no the real season is starting this week i was gonna say screw soul shout out to soul for having baseball down there but we know opening day baseball is here for real this week, Nick Earnshaw, we're back. The shift is here. Episode 49. Let's go. Major League Baseball later this week. Ready for the season. Let's go. Talk to him, Francisco. Ah. I love the energy. You know, it's opening. Well, this is the real opening week. Real opening week. I'm not going to lie. I love soul, but man, yeah. 3 a.m. Soul's awake. got soul, baby. But we, uh, the real soul is coming this Thursday. Was not awake. Was not awake. But we got oh, the season starting. Oh, I can smell the hot dogs. I can smell the crack of the bat. I can hear the crack of the bat. <laughs> I am the crew. We got another season, Francisco. The ship's going to be ready to go all season oh. long. Oh, we got ready. content episodes. Yes. Oh, yeah. We're going to be going places. Oh, it's, oh. it's going to be a jam-packed year. Let me tell you. I, I came prepared. Oh. You did not, clearly. I know, I know. You didn't no, go I prepared. got the old radio station on. My Westchester yeah. University. <laughs> all right, we love it. I got to, love you know it. what I'm saying? Love you it. know what I'm saying? I love it. But listen, yeah. I'm, ex- I'm as excited as you. I like, we're here. We're here. It's finally here, man. Woo-hoo! Yeah. I, I'm, I'm ready, man. Thursday, Thursday at one ten. Brewers Mets. I don't know why the, I was gonna say the, the Cubs always play it, but no, they're not. They're, they're going to be playing later in the day, I believe. So, uh, but the Brewers and Mets, on Thursday at 1 10 p.m. Eastern time, which is where we're at. I'll be ready for 3 05. I know you will as well. Strider, okay. Wheeler, Phil's Braves. Chance I could get rained out, actually. So it might be Friday. Um, but for right now, Phil's Braves, Friday at, or excuse me, Thursday at 3 05. But before we get into, look, this is going to be a mostly regular season uh, preview. We'll preview um, some awards. We'll preview the divisional winners, stuff like that. We're definitely definitely going to get into it. But we have to get into probably the biggest sports. I, w- I would say it's the biggest sports story of the year, not just baseball story. Biggest base, uh, sports story of the year so far. Last time we did the episode, Nick, uh, we were able to hop on the same day. This uh, story came down about Shohei Otani uh, and his – interpreter and everything going on with this whole gambling scandal at the time all we knew was about the espn story about um ipe mizuhara shohei otani's former uh interpreter and all of his ties uh to this gambling scandal at first he said otani helped him uh, wire money uh for his gambling debts and then backtracked it uh, afterwards and said he actually had nothing to do with it. So um, let's let's get into it. Let's get into Shohei Otani spoke to the media today. Nick, I know you have the uh, the audio ready here. Um, let's just get right to the audio. This is what uh, Shohei Otani had to say today through his new interpreter, I believe. Um, just to kind of just go over the result, uh, in conclusion, uh, Ipe has been stealing money from my account and has told lies. I mean, there you have it, dude. Yeah. He's been stealing from his account and he's told lies. This is after we saw him and Muzuhara in the dugout for game number two or game number one, whichever game it was, game number one. It was opening day, technically opening day of the regular season. And look like they're nothing, they, they look like they were the best of friends, look like the close friends that they claimed to be. But here it is Otani claims. That he didn't know about it, that he's telling lies. Now, that was just a snippet. Just going to take you through a short uh, timeline list of what 
was said, this was according to The Athletic. So he opened up by saying pretty much, I'm very sad and in shock that someone who I trusted has done this. Uh, this is according to Otani. I never bet on baseball or any other sports or never have asked somebody to do that on my, my behalf. I have never gone through a bookmaker to bet on sports. Uh, up until a couple of days ago, I didn't know that this was happening. In conclusion, Ipe has been stealing money from my account and has told lies. I mean, that's pretty much um, the extent he did go on. Uh, pretty much just um, saying he was beyond shocked. He kind of, um, you know, said he's uh, not feeling great about it, feeling sad, feeling disappointed, feeling upset, um, and said, lastly, he said, I'm looking forward to focusing on the season. I'm glad that we had this opportunity to talk, and I'm sure there'll be continuing investigations moving forward. Nick, what's your reaction to this? Um, well, first of all, he didn't take any questions during the during that media press conference today. Not no a good questions. Look. It was just a statement uh from Otani and then his brand new interpreter. Um I, I don't know, man. This is such a wild story and a, a shocking start to a baseball season that I, I don't think anybody saw coming. Um, and like you mentioned in the open right there, um, he like they, these guys were buddy buddy the day of this this story dropping. Like they knew beforehand that this was gonna drop, and they looked okay in the dugout, like everything was fine, like no big deal. I mean, this is a gigantic story. Um, the best player in baseball, but compared He's Babe Ruth-esque, right? Like, he pitches, he hits. Like, this guy is the face of a sport. Not a face of a franchise. The face of the, the global face of a sport. Um, and he is now embedded in this scandal. Um, I There's still got to be questions, man. I'm sorry. Like, there, there's still so many questions. Because the way the story got out at first, that things were just not adding up. They changed the story. Things happened. You know, maybe the guy was completely taking money from him and Shohei had no idea. But there has to be a full investigation. And I love Major League Baseball dropping this on a Friday that they're investigating Otani. A nice Friday news dump while everyone's headed in the weekend. Oh, yeah, we're going to investigate mm -hmm. Otani. Let's put the press release out on five, like 5 o'clock. It was late in the afternoon on a Friday afternoon. So um, that that was pretty uh, funny, too, to see that happen. Um because, you know, the MLB is scared to death about this. Um, this is the face of baseball. They've put a lot of resources into him being the face of the game. Um, and this is not a good look, no matter what happens here. Um, the thing that just still blows my mind is that there were nine wire transfers, nine of five hundred thousand dollars to the uh, to the bookmaking operation in Southern California that is under federal investigation. Now I know he makes a lot of money, but you're telling me he didn't see anything in his account. And then when the first story came out, oh he he actually wired the money for the interpreter. But no, we backtracked on that statement. And the Tuesday press or the Tuesday interview that uh, the interpreter Ipe did with ESPN is not coming out now. Is that just forgotten? There's so many that after I, I, I didn't learn anything today. The, the, the essence of my point is I don't think we learned anything today. He made a statement because he had to, he was, I mean, he had to come out and say something at some point. He's going to have to answer questions at some point. They can't just hide him from the media all season long. Um, so today we learned absolutely nothing on this situation. Um, and I think we're not going to know a, more about it for a little while. I think the investigation needs to happen uh, for Major League Baseball into Otani, as well as uh, the investigation into the bookmaking operation, right? Like, I, it, there's so much here that I think we still don't know, and there's still questions to be answered in my estimation. That's just that's just where I'm at with, with the whole entire thing. Yeah, I, I mean, my, my whole thing, dude, it's very convenient to come mm. out have your interpreter, your new interpreter, read a statement from you saying, I mean, he he, he read it himself in um, Japanese, um, but still just read a statement, didn't take any questions. I'm sorry, that that looks, that doesn't look great. If if you really didn't know about this, if you really, if you're really like stunned and all this stuff, I understand that you're saying you feel the way you feel. I mean, you're going to feel field questions maybe i'm wrong i've never been in this type of situation maybe i'm wrong but my uh you know um 
uh, experience as a sports fan is in these type of situations, if someone really didn't do something or, or whatnot, even if it's a, a situation like this, um, you're still going to, you know, not make it, try to not make it look like you did and ad- actually did anything wrong. Yeah. So, well, fact- another thing I, I'll even add, sorry to, ju- to cut you off, no, just to absolutely. jump in. Um, you know, there's, there's, there's people that are involved in legal, there's lawyers involved now. So they're going to want him to be as quiet as possible. They don't want him to say anything. They want to control the entire narrative. So when there's lawyers involved, obviously he's not going to take questions. It's just, it's that simple. So, you know, uh, that this is where we're at, man. It, it's, Oh, it's it, it's a tough situation that we're we're watching unfold right now. Um, but yeah, like I would want to be out there. No, let me take questions. Like I I didn't do anything. Like this guy stole from me. Boom, point blank. Um, and this is ridiculous. Like I mean, they were laughing the same day the story came out. Yeah, they were is. laughing in the dugout. That's what's getting me. And then the 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 walking back of certain statements, the interview with ESPN, and I, it, it's crazy. It's it's crazy. Wild, wild start to 20. Yeah, I mean, am I ruling out that maybe Otani did, didn't actually know? I'm not ruling it completely no, out. No, you never know, not. man. I mean, Tiger Woods cheated on his wife with a hundred women and she didn't know until the last second. Yeah. So like there, there I mean, there are situations where it's like, how'd you not know? Well, maybe I didn't actually know. Maybe the good the person's really good at hiding things. You never you never know. Some people find things about even your closest friends that you didn't know, and that's just how it goes. But the optics you know, from the entertainment business here being baseball from us as fans, it doesn't look good from that yeah. side of things. It doesn't look good for Shohei Otani. And my fear, Nick is I, I, you know, MLB says they've lost some investigation come down uh, on this as hard as you can, just because it's Otani and we all like him doesn't mean you shouldn't, you know, really come down hard here and put a, a, a really uh, well, investigation here you should it needs to be um a good investigation yeah it needs to be thorough it needs to be truthful and if they're you know if there's bad actors there needs to be punishment for those bad actors in this situation i we don't know all the facts yet the the full story is not out yet we that is clear to me the full story is definitely not out yet um because things weren't adding up when it first came out um so i'm just very curious i want to wait for everything to kind of unfold see where it goes see where the when the investigative report comes out eventually that's when that's when we can really make a determination i feel like so we'll wait for that to happen but in the meantime it's all kind of speculative at this point i mean you know what i mean like it's like how do you feel you know but you don't all the facts aren't out there yet um so we you know we see what the what he did at the press conference today he gave a statement obviously he's not going to take any questions it's not going to be more than that for a little while so i don't know how long they're going to keep him from not taking questions from the media but uh this is this is going to be an interesting story to follow and you know what's crazy as we were coming on the air to do this show there was another report in basketball that there were irregularities um from a toronto raptors player uh re- regarding prop bets i so and then and then a few weeks ago uh temple basketball there were irregularities with betting on temple basketball in in college so there, there's been some stories coming out over the last month about sports betting, sports gambling in the industry. It, it's it, it's widespread, man. I mean, we're seeing stuff uh, pop up uh, on a regular basis now over the past month, and that I, it's not a good thing. It's not a good thing for the integrity of these sports, man. Um, it sucks. It sucks. But you know, this is what happens when you have all of these gambling sites and you it's starting to be legalized legal, now this right. is you know this is going to come with the territory there's going to be stories like this um and you know it was just a matter of time before it happened right all right nick uh we're gonna move on what did you have for dinner tonight <sighs> what did i have for di- oh what did i have for dinner tonight i can't oh, even remember what did i have for dinner oh, what are you like 90 oh i came in no i, I dude yeah, i am blanket you had ice cream i, I did have ice cream, cream. Yeah, for dinner? Yeah. That's, that's, something, you, that's something you would have. What did I have for dinner? No, I, I am legitimately drawing a blank. All uh, can right I go, now. I'll let you think. Can I yeah, tell? Yeah, you got to go first. I'm drawing right. a blank. What did I have All right, dinner? so I had uh, I had salad. Salad with some croutons. No dressing. I'm weird like that. Um, And then I had some chili. Yeah, you're not even paying attention because you're just worried about what you had. Uh, <laughs> I had some chili with a couple of <laughs> tablespoons of sour cream on top delicious mother made the chili you know what i'm saying you for you remember didn't you yeah. 
uh, uh, you, you can go in a second. I, I just because you just remember doesn't mean you get to go now. You don't need to just cut me off like you're there. Right? So uh, anyway, and then I had a cheeseburger that my mother made me. Um, and it was delicious. I, I would go for, I could go for another one right now, but, um, you know, it's nine 30 at night. She's not gonna make me another one. Um, so dinner was delicious. You know, I had a healthy, uh, dose of some salad, some beef, some Turkey, it was Turkey chili, by the way. It was turkey oh. chili. So it was delicious. Um, so what was your dinner? All right. So I, I remember now I could not, I literally, I could not remember what I had for dinner tonight. That's pretty bad. Um, I had, I had a burger, I had a cheeseburger, a hot you. dog. And French fries. That's what oh, I had so, for dinner. Okay, so it was like barbecue night. Yeah, it was barbecue night. Was, we, were, we were grilling, so it was, uh, it was a good time. I went out and got ice cream afterwards. I got the pup cup for the dog. He enjoyed that. Where did you get ice cream, by the way? You just told me the ice cream place. Like, what the hell are you talking it's about? A local ice cream shop right near my okay, house. Okay, what's it called? Shout him out. Cold Cow. Cold Cow. Colton Cowser? No. Yeah, Colton Cow. Yeah. Cold <laughs> Cow. Fantastic. Fantastic little little joint right there. Uh, I got, I got, a, I got a chocolate milkshake. That's what I got. Nice. So you can get yeah. ice cream. You got a chocolate milkshake. Yeah. I'm a big milkshake guy. So why don't you say you got a milkshake? You told me you got ice cream. That's not a milkshake. Well, yeah, I got, you know, everyone else at the household. I got them ice cream too. I was treating. I treated That's today. Sweet. Yeah. I was, yeah, I'm good, yeah. Right. I got the pup cup for the dog. Yeah. It was a great All night. Right. Uh, with that, with that. Good job. You finally remembered. <laughs> we dive into the meat and potatoes. We hope you had a uh, wonderful dinner tonight as well. Um, and the meat and potatoes, boy. We're about to stop. I don't want to say that. We're about to get into it. <laughs> don't We're get us get in it. trouble. Don't get yeah, us in trouble. Know, I was about the season's to just started. It doesn't sound right. Uh, <laughs> let's get into Major League Baseball uh, uh, season preview, pretty much. We got some stuff to talk about here as far as divisional winners, World Series matchup uh, awards. So, uh, and then we'll get to some starting pitching matchups that mm. we like on opening day because mm. they're a good amount. I'm excited about some of these. So, let's start with the divisional winners, Nick. Uh, we can go back and forth. We will start with the National League East. I'm going to go with the Atlanta Braves, the slight edge. Um, I like the Phillies a lot this year. I'll get to them actually um, just very shortly after this. Um, uh, segment is over. Um, but I like the Phillies a lot this year. I actually like the Phillies to win 95 games and finish second. I think it's going to kind of mirror to a certain extent the 2022 season where the Mets and Braves both finished with about 100 wins, I believe it was. Uh, I like the Braves at about 97 to 98 wins. Um, I still really like uh, their offense and their bullpen just a tiny, tiny bit more than the Phillies. So I'm going to go with the Atlanta Braves. Who do you like in the National League? East? Yeah, I got, mm, I got to go with the Braves again. I just feel like they're a regular season team. Um, they're built for the regular season. They're stacked. I think they'll win over 100 games. I Listen, I think the Phillies went around that the same amount, like 94 wins, which in most divisions could could, could be fine, right? Absolutely. But I think the Braves are that good. I think they went over 100 games again. Um, I just think that's just how they're built and how they, they're wired. And they've been like that over the past couple of seasons. Um, I, I think the Braves won 102 games this year. Um, that, that's why I'm mm. at with the Atlanta Braves. And they're going to win the NL East. It stinks. I, it pains me to say it, but they're going to win the NL East. Once again, uh, I now if the Phillies sign Jordan Montgomery, eh, then I, uh, different story. Yeah, I agree. Story. We're on the same wavelength. We're on the same that, wavelength. It's a different story. But um, right now, as of this moment, they don't have Jordan Montgomery. Uh, Taiwan Walker's hurt. They don't have as much depth at the back end of the rotation. I got to go with the Atlanta Braves. Uh, who you like in the National League Central? <laughs> this one was tough. This oh, one was tough. Yeah, yeah, I know. You made the right choice, though, by the way. You're saying this. Go ahead. This one was tough. But I gotta go with the my guy, my favorite, one of my favorite oh my players gosh. in all of baseball. Can I shut it off? Right He's now. the leader. He's the leader. No, Cody you're Bellinger. Not the yeah. The Cincinnati Reds. No, you're not. Were the most improved team in the and in the NL Central last year. They got up to 82 wins uh, after a, a terrible season before. They they improved the most. I think they continue to improve and they continue to ascend. I'm taking the Cincinnati. Reds to win the NL Central. I love them. I think they win it. The Brewers take a step back. I don't trust the Cubs completely yet. The Reds are going to shock you this year. 
They're going to shock you with the young core that they have. They have Matt McClain. They got Ellie. They got Steed. They got Green. They got all types of players. Yeah, they got Hunter Green, but they can't stay healthy. They can't can't stay healthy. Oh, well, we'll we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. And I'm I'm saying he stays healthy. I'm taking you like Frankie Reds. Montes as their ace? You like him? I'm taking the Reds. I'm taking the Reds all day. They have some ball like players Montes? now. They have some ball players now. They have some eight major league players. They have some young ascending <laughs> players in a wide open division. Reds, Reds, Reds all day. Yeah, I, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna go. I, I think they improve. I don't think they win the division. I still like the Chicago Cubs, which I think are the uh, correct choice here. I think their offense is still a little better than the Cincinnati Reds. Um, you got Hap, Suzuki, Bellinger, Morrell, Swanson, uh, a little bit of Nico Horner there in the bottom of the lineup. Um, and I really, and I think the edge here over the Reds for sure, and the Cardinals as well. I think the Cardinals actually like their offense still. Um, but the Cubs, you got Justin Steele, Cy Young candidate last year. Cal Hendricks, uh, one of the more underrated pitchers in Major League Baseball over the last decade or so. Um, and we'll see what we got with Shati uh, Imanaga there. Um, but I like, uh, you know, Steele and Hendricks at the top of that rotation. And uh, I like, you know, you add Hector Nearest in that bullpen. I, I like the Cubs, man. I like the Cubs more than the Reds. I think uh, a little bit more veteran experience there. I think it's going to give them the edge there. Uh, in the division. I think like 88 wins probably wins the division. That's going to do it for the Cubs. So, so I got the Cubs. So you have the Reds improving to what? They had 82 wins last year. Yeah, maybe like 84, 85. <laughs> I don't like they got to prove it to that rotation, man. Frankie Montes uh, hasn't really been healthy. And um, even when he was with uh, New York, it wasn't that great. It wasn't fair. that great. So Listen. I don't. It's I, a I, wide open division. I see an right. ascending team and an improving team. I I think it's gonna be close between them and the Cubs. Don't get me wrong. I think it's gonna be yeah, close. It's a boring division for me. But I'm right. taking the Reds. I think they're an ascending team. This is a year for them to kind of take control of the division. Okay, fine, 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 fine. NL West. Should we do we even need to talk about this? We have the Dodgers. Who you got? You didn't take the. Yeah, I'm just kidding. It's the Dodgers. The Dodgers. The Dodgers. The Dodgers. Although do, I do have a surprise in this division, actually. But the Dodgers, yeah, the Dodgers are gonna win this division. I don't think it's close. Um yeah, Moto's been it's... getting lit up this spring, though. Yeah, he has. Uh, you know, we'll see what we'll see about uh the, the rookie of the year talk and the Cy Young talk, and we'll see. Uh-huh, we'll, see. We'll, uh-huh. we'll, we'll get to that in a little bit. But yeah, Dodgers and you... L West for me. Who you like the uh, AL East? Do you need to ask me this question? Oh my god! Well, if you pick the Reds, we know who you're gonna pick. Do we need need to ask? Gosh darn it! The Baltimore Orioles, like they had the best record last year, they're gonna have the best record again this year in Major League Baseball. That's how good I think this team can be. The youngsters they have. Oh my, Kobe Mayo, Cowser, Holiday, Rutschman, Goner. Oh, let me keep going. Frank Corbin Burns in that rotation. Oh my goodness! What a what a team this is going to be. I, I I think they have 105 wins this year. 105. Oh my God, relax. How about how about that? 105 relax. wins winning the AL East. My, you like this Orioles. rotation? I trust them enough. This team won over 100 games last year. And they added Corbin Burns. Yeah, you're right. Okay, well we're not talking about World Series yet. So I mean, I, I can I can I can rock oh, with that. But are we? Rock with that. But are we? Oh my God. But are we? They, this is a team that made. This is a team that made it to the divisional round last year. They're young. I get it. They didn't. You know, they, they didn't prove anything in the playoffs last year. But they got the experience, Francisco. And when I see a team that's ascending like the Reds, they're on their way in the NL. And I see a team that's really, really ascending with the best prospects in baseball who are turning into really good major league players. I gotta go with the Orioles. They're winning that division hands down. I, I just don't see the Yankees doing it. I don't see the Blue Jays doing it. The Rays are taking a little bit of a step back. I'm going with the Orioles. Fine. Fine. Yeah, I'm going with the Orioles too. I, yeah, I, I wasn't even arguing. It was just like, <laughs> it was all, yeah. yeah I don't even know. Why, why was I even giving you pushback? I, I, I like the Orioles too. I just wanted to give you pushback <laughs> for the sake of pushback. Um, <laughs> all right. Central. Central is like an interesting division, actually. It's kind of a wide open division, but I'm going to yep. take the Twins mm-hmm. once again. I like Pablo Lopez and Joe Ryan at the top of that rotation. Um, Royce Lewis, I think key. 
uh, to this Twins team this year. You'll get a full year out of him. He hit some big time home runs late in the season last year and uh, in the playoffs. So I, I like uh, I like the uh, I like the Twins in that division. But there's some talk about the Kansas City Royals after the offseason. They had a really a really underrated offseason. I mean, a really boring offseason. Let's be honest in Major League Baseball. Um, but I'm going to stick with the Minnesota Twins. Who do you like, Nick? Yeah, I I think this is kind of an open division. The Guardians could make a push too, but I, I got to go with the Minnesota Twins. They won it last year. I think they win it again this year. Um, so I got to go with the Twins. I, I think, I, yeah, I just think this is their division in, in my estimation to, to win it this year. Hey, what do you? I'm just curious your your thoughts here because this is one I was thinking about just because of this division being so mm-hmm. wide open. Do you? What do you think about the Tigers? Uh, I don't. I don't think they're there yet. I, I don't. They've got some there. interesting look. They, you know, yeah. You added, uh, I think that I think that rotation has uh, some some uh, potential. You got Tarek Skubal, um, there at the top of the rotation. Uh, you got Kenta Maeda, who's been good in the past. Jack yeah. Flaherty, who I think could be possibly be a candidate. Maybe for a little bit of a comeback player of the year, Casey Mize, former number one draft pick. Yeah, uh, he's, he, interesting. he's I'm interesting. telling you this. This rotation has potential. I'm not saying they're going to be good. I'm not saying they're going to be great or anything like that. I'm just saying there's potential there. There's yeah, potential I, those four guys. Mize, Mize is an intrigue. Uh, Mize is an intriguing prospect. He's had some injury problems, um, like, but he like coming up, like he was a he was a guy that really to watch for and like. I feel like he's kind of been forgotten a little right. bit. Um, so I'm I'm very curious to see what he does uh yes. next year. I'm very I'm very curious. Um I'm looking at the, the so what they won 78 games net last year. Guardians won 76. I, I don't think the Royals have a shot. The White Sox, no. I think the Guardians will be better. Um Tigers, I think they'll I don't think they'll make a push over the Twins. I think the Twins are just a better team. They, they're more put together. Um, I, I think they should win this division handily. I mean, they won it by nine games last year. I don't think – I think it's kind of going to be the same. Maybe like they win by seven, six games this year um, in that division. That's just where I'm at. Well, what uh, what do you think of the AL West? The West, uh, this is – I mean, yeah, obviously you have the World Series champions in the Texas Rangers, right? Right. Um, they kind of blew it last year. Um, the Astros came back on the last day of the season to win it. Ended up playing them in the AL CS. Um, but I got to go Astros. I think the Astros win it again. I think they win the division. Texas right now doesn't have Jordan Montgomery as well. They don't bring him back uh, as as of this point. Um, and I just think the Astros are going to be too good. You know, they add some pitching in the off season. Uh, I think they. I think they're going to be as good as advertised as they've been over the past couple of seasons. So I, I don't think there's any reason to go against the Houston Astros as division winners. I know it was close last year. I know Texas just won the world series. Astros are too good, man. I, I think they're going to be even better this year than they were last year. I don't think they. I think they win more than just 90 games. I think they get like the 95 mark I, at least. Yeah. We're, we're on the, uh, we're on the same, um, we're on the same page here with the Astros and the hater, Edition, you know, I've been saying this, you know, the last couple of months. The the hater edition really, I think, puts them over the top in that division. I like the Rangers. Um, I, I don't think they've, they've done enough in their bullpen. Um, you know, this off season, uh, if maybe if the Rangers were the one to get hater, we might have be having a different story. Yeah, different story here. Um, you know, Verlander is starting the season on the IL. I think I don't know when McCullers comes back. Um, but I still like the top of their rotation with Valdez. Christian Javier, I think, could be a good um, yep. candidate for bounce back season. And I love their offense. Jordan Alvarez actually might be someone that's not talked about enough in Major League Baseball because yeah. um, of how an incredible, incredible hitter that he is. I, I just uh, I like the Astros. I'm with you, bro. I'm I'm truly with you. I like the uh, I like the Astros in this division. I'll go about like 94, 95 games. Yeah. The winner. Um, uh, should we save? Uh, let's just get to it. All right, World Series matchup. Who do you like in the as for the matchup, and who wins? How many games? This is uh, <laughs> I think I may have picked this last year at some point during the season. This matchup, okay. And I'm feeling it this year though. It's gotta happen. It's an East, all East Coast, all East Coast. Oh teams. my 
God. Two East God, Coast teams. Such a fraud. Go ahead. Two East Coast teams. For the NL, I think the Phillies finally get over the hump. I think they make a deadline deal that helps them get over the hump this year. They get another pitcher, whether they sign Montgomery or not. I think they make a move at the deadline. They have some depth in the outfield. They can move a piece to go get a starting pitcher or something. I think that could be possible. They have the prospects to do it as well. This is the year they go for it, right? I like the Phillies in the NL. I do. I just they, – they play so well in the postseason. They're at the bank. And it's not me being a homer. It's not. I, I just think they have the lineup. They have the pitching staff. I think this is the year to go for it, right? I'm I'm taking the Phillies in the NL. I think they get over that hump. They get through the wild card series pretty handily. Um, they'll face the Braves again somehow, some way, um, whether it's in the division series or not. I think the Phillies get in the NL. I really do. I think this is the year they're they're, they're biting. They're just they're so close, right? They've been there. They've been to the World Series a couple years ago. Got to Game Six against the Astros this year. Uh, last year they you know fell apart in Game Seven. They've been so close. I think they just get over the hump at some point with this core. I I can't see this core not winning a title. I just can't see it. I think the Phillies go to the World Series this year for the NL. Now the American League. It's their time, man. It is their time. They're going to have the best record in baseball again. They're going to win the AL East. They have stars up and down. They have a guy who's probably going to win rookie of the year. And I, they got a couple of guys that could win rookie of the year. The Baltimore Orioles are going to be in the World Series this year. That's how much I believe in their young core. That's how much I think they're going to be even better than they were last year. They have the postseason experience now. They got a top-line starter in Corbin Burns at the front of rotation to go in the game ones of the postseason, go into the game ones of the DS, in the CS. I like the Orioles, man. How can you not pick the Orioles? I understand the Astros there. I understand they're there. But they're they're going like this. They're going downward. The Orioles are just going upward. Orioles, Phils, Camden Yards, CBP. That's where the World Series is going. We're going to be attending games at some way, somehow. We'll make the drive up and down I'm 95. Down I'm down with 95 that. series from Baltimore to Philadelphia. That's the World Series prediction right there. Uh, I'm down with I'm down with going to these games. But there it, <laughs> all right. So I think last year I picked Braves Astros. I did yeah. a 2021 rematch. <laughs> And wouldn't you have it? I'm picking a 2022 rematch. I'm going Astros Phillies. Oh, yeah, whoa. I'm going Astros Phillies. Um, I, I think the Phillies are right there, man. I think the Phillies know how to win in the postseason. I know that ne- technically it didn't seem that way against Arizona, uh, but they they did it in 2022. I think this team is really close, and they're pissed off about mm-hmm. what happened in 2023. Mm-hmm. Um, I think top to bottom, they're. I mean. I don't know about them having a number one bullpen in baseball at CourtneyLB.com, but no. I definitely think they have an elite bullpen. Um, have they, they do have potential to be a number one bullpen yeah. in baseball, but I don't want to say that. But regardless, um, I think top to bottom, I think they have one of the best teams in baseball. The The fact that here in Philadelphia we're debating about who should be the opening day center fielder between Johan Rojas and Christian Pache just shows how good the offense is when we're just debating stuff like that. It shouldn't be. I mean, who cares? It's the nine holes. These are Pache and Rojas are two young guys that, um, you know, have big time potential. So who cares about that? The Johan Rojas is going to be the opening day center fielder. And he's, you know, he's really there for his defense, which is why they had him in the playoffs last season. So I, I think um, the Phillies are so stacked on offense. I really like the rotation. Interesting here with the Tywin Walker news, but I still really like the rotation. Looks like Spencer Turnbull will slot in as the number yep. five for now. We'll see what happens with Montgomery. Um, as there have been reports that um, he has two long-term offers on the table. So we'll see uh, what happens with Jordan Montgomery. And I really like the bullpen. Um, so the Phils, I just like them a lot. The Braves have choked in the playoffs the last couple of years, you know, coming at the hands uh, of the Phils, the Dodgers, I don't like the Dodgers rotation enough. I think that's one thing. I know Yamamoto. We'll see. Maybe Yamamoto is great this year. Maybe that's a big X factor. But still, is that enough? I don't know. Tyler Glass now, can he stay healthy? Um, the rest of that rotation, who is it? Like, uh, I'm, I'm trying to think. I'm drawing blanks. Um, Bobby Miller. Bobby Miller's still young. Can he prove it? Um, James Paxton is right now slotted in as their number five, according to Fangrass. I just don't think, you know, pitching really, really wins championships at the end of the day. Um, and the the Dodgers just don't have it for me right now. So I'm going with the Phils, National League. Astros have them getting back. 
I, I like I said, I explained this. Josh Hader, that addition is just going to put them over the top, and the Astros are going to get back to the World Series. And my winner, I'm going to go Philadelphia Phillies in seven games. Mm. Not being right. trying to be a homer, but uh, just being real, I'm going to Phils in seven. Yeah, I didn't pick a winner. Pick I'm going to go. I'm going to go Phils too. I think the Wills Phils win in six. Phils win in six that. over the Look Orioles. Over the Orioles, and you know, you know who's going to be the X factor, Mister Craig Kimbrell. <laughs> Yes. Greg Kimbrell, the X Factor yes. in that series. Yeah. Yes. A little payback. Uh, little payback. Apparently he's starting to change up in spring. So look at that. I don't care. I don't care. I'm just That's, saying. I, I'm just gonna pretend he's not there all season in Baltimore to ruin yeah. my youngster. Yeah, um, I mean you're you're a Baltimore Orioles fan, so yeah. Listen, I'm not I'm not well, I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan. I am uh I am I'm just watching from afar. <laughs> you can be a fan and watch from afar. I'm just watching about? from afar. Yeah. I enjoy I enjoy their brand of baseball. But I, you won't see me wearing Orioles stuff during the World Series, Francisco. That's what you won't. It's see. okay if you want to. I, I wouldn't. Uh, I, I wouldn't judge you. I'm just saying. You want to wear your Adley jersey under your Bryce Harper jersey? I'm fine with that. No shot. Not a sh- yeah. not a chance. I don't. I don't judge, bro. I don't judge. Not a chance. Randy not Johnson's a, chance. a legend. You know what I'm saying? Randy <laughs> Johnson's a legend. That's all I got to say on that. All right, so that's our World Series predictions. I have Phillies in seven over the Astros. You have Phillies in six over the Baltimore Orioles. Uh, Awards time. Uh, We were going to do MVP, Cy Young, and Rookie of the Year uh, for each league. I'll go first here on MVP. I'm going to start the American League. I'm going to go Juan Soto. Uh, I think he's going to have a ginormous year um, over there with the two short porches um, in Yankee Stadium. Um, He's built for... Uh, a, a big time uh, market like this out there uh, with the New York Yankees. Um, he's going to have some protection in that lineup with uh, with Aaron Judge or vice versa. They'll both be protecting yeah. each other. Um, so I like Juan Soto to win MVP. Um, I have, I'm actually going to have more on him in a little bit, so I don't want to give up away too much on what his stat line yeah. will be or anything like that. Uh, but Juan Soto, again, he's only 25 years old. I have to remind you people that he's only yeah. 25 years old and he's already putting up Insane numbers since he helped the Na- the the Nationals get to the World Series back in 2019. Um, Juan Soto, uh, he's ready. He's ready to win an MVP. The, the fact that um, you know, I think Juan Soto is going to win multiple MVPs throughout his career on his way to a, a Hall of Fame um, type career. So, I like Juan Soto in the American League. Uh, let me give you my National League one, then I'll give let you go with your American League and National League. National League. <sighs> I'm going with Fernando Tatis Jr. I this could have been like a bold prediction, but I think the guy, I think the people kind of forget about him. He had his whole situation um, with the PEDs that he was uh. taking a couple of years ago. Finish, he got some down ballot MVP votes last season. I think the guy's ready to come back, hit 40 homers, play. I think he got won a gold glove last year. I think the guy's ready uh, for uh, uh, a re. I don't know, is that a re-breakout season? I don't know. He had a he had a good season last year. I, I think he's ready to be elite again, and I think he's ready to win an MVP. I like Fernando Tatis Jr. in the National League, so I think you're going to get two young, young superstars. I'm still calling Tatis a superstar, um, especially as he, after he wins MVP this year. Juan Soto in the American League, Fernando Tatis Jr. in the National League. Nick Earnshaw, give me your picks. Wow. I uh, Tatis won through me. I'm not going to lie. Wow. Yeah. I don't know if it happens, but maybe he does have hey. a bounce back, a big year. I, you know, we'll he had see. had a good year last year. It's not like he's having yeah. a bounce back. He just had a good year last year. I mean, we're talking MVP, like bounce right. back for that. Form, I mean, he right? forty-two home he's, runs a couple of years ago. He had a big time yeah, season a couple of years ago. I'm saying, wow. Okay, um, so we we've been agreeing too much today, which is actually making me upset. Um, no, and I, like I don't like it. Yeah, I hate it. Uh, Soto, I have Soto as my MVP in the American Man. League too. I do. I, I have it written down right here. I have yeah. it in pen, in, you know, on my Good. notes. Good. Uh, yeah, I got Soto as my MVP. I I'm I mean, he's in Yankee Stadium, the short porch out there. Um, I think it's it's for him that you know in Yankee Stadium. Um, you're having the protection of the Judge. You got Stan in the lineup too. I, yeah, I, I can't see him not having a big year in that home run park. It's man. an easy I mean, pick, but it's a fun. It's, it's still like yeah, I, I think it's exciting for the game because Juan yeah. Soto as a Yankee could so you know, big time. Yeah, 
Yeah, I think Ju- I think Judge is like the slight favorite over him, but they're like the two top favorites, I believe. If you look at the betting market, um, mm-hmm. I think it's like Judge and then Soto. I I, I can see Soto having just a monster monster year for the Yankees. This I think year. a lot of people now, and he had a hot spring too. So. Yeah, so he he's just he, he's gonna be a foreman. We you know you you already said it. He's twenty five years of age, man. He's he's still not even in the midst of his prime. And he's I know. This good. Fun. ridiculous Funny. thank god he's out out, out of the national league the NL yeah, East, yeah. it's yeah. it's good um and now yeah. national league <laughs> it's coming back this guy plays first base he's a newly first baseman newly first base <laughs> oh come on <laughs> bryce is gonna win an mvp this year i'm telling you okay. he's gonna be yeah. healthy the back's gonna be okay it's Not all gonna MVP, be fine huh? it, he's gonna win the mvp again man uh i i think he is red re- this is a this is an angry like you meant angry Phillies team. This is an angry team. They they coming angry. off the game seven loss, they, there's no they, this team's gonna be uh, on a different level this year. Like they'll they'll compete for the division. I feel like for a while, but then I think Atlanta's gonna eventually just kind of run away with it at some point. Um, but yeah, th- this is a good team that's gonna win 95 games. They're gonna look legit all year. Harper's going to have that big year. He needs another MVP to add to his repertoire, his resume. I think this is the year he does it. He's at first base. He's going to be playing every day again. Um, he's out in the field. He's not just dh anymore. Puts it all together once again. I think he needs another MVP in a Phillies uniform. I think it happens. I think this is the year that happens. Um, I think everything kind of comes together for Philadelphia this year. MVP-type season, World Series. This is this – is, I think this is the year that Bryce takes the MVP. I think he has 30 plus home runs. I think he has over 100 RBIs. I think this is a monster, monster year for Bryce Harper um, and this lineup. I really, really do. Yeah, no, I don't. I, I like your picks. And I think it's ironic that um, if Soto and Bryce Harper both won MVP yeah. in the same year, you Be know, crazy. Uh, Soto to follow up Bryce yeah. in, uh, in Washington. I think that yeah. would think that would be wild. I think uh, Bryce cool. has a lot of respect for Soto, and I think yep. it's uh, vice versa uh, as well. Um, uh, I'll give you my Cy Young picks here in AL and NL, and then I want yours. Uh, American okay. League. I, I'm gonna go. Um, and I think this is gonna be tough. I don't want to say tough because I want to say this is gonna put the Seattle Mariners over the hump a little bit to get in the playoffs. But I really like Luis Castillo. I th- I think this is a. Th- I can see him, um, kind of snagging like a, a sneaky Cy Young here in okay. his career. Um, you know, he's had a, he had some good years there in Cincinnati. Had a really good year last year for Seattle. Finished fifth in Cy Young voting. Um, throws hard. He is one of the nastiest two seamers slash sinkers in the game. Uh, throws it really hard, about ninety eight to hundred. Um, really like watching him pitch. Uh, that to go along with his changeup, just nasty, nasty stuff. And uh, I think Luis Castillo. Um, I can see him just kind of, you know, be someone be someone uh, that we're gonna look back on his career, be like. He was a good pitcher. But remember that, you know, you know, he had a Cy Young too. I think he's going to be um, someone that uh, maybe we'll be talking about um, snagging a Cy Young in his career. And I think this is going to be the year uh, that Luis Castillo does it. He's 31 years old, right in the prime of his career still. still, um, And maybe that uh, maybe, maybe that puts uh, Seattle into the playoffs. I don't know. Uh, you know, a couple of teams there in the AL East that, you know, commit the playoffs, the Yankees, uh, the Rays, uh, the Blue Jays. It's going to be tough. But maybe the you know maybe you got the Rangers and the Astros there. Um, but you, that's besides the point. I, I like Luis Castillo to win the uh, American League Young Award. Um, National League, not so surprising one. This guy has uh has pulled out a new pitch this spring, and he said it himself. He thinks this pitch can be the pitch that's going to win in the Cy Young. I'm going with Zach Wheeler. A uh, guy just uh, signed a three year extension. Uh, he has one of the highest AAV contracts in major league baseball history now uh, has been we talked about him within the last couple of shows um where i said that uh zach's i think has been a little underrated even if, mm. if we think that's possible yeah. but he's been one of the best pitchers in baseball his splitter his new splitter looks nasty yep. i think zach wheel is ready to win the Young this year for real i wanted to say aaron nola but um th- there's just something about i don't think nola's have a bad year by any by any yeah. means i think nola's have a good year um but i'd be kind of but, you know, holding the brakes a little bit. Maybe, maybe Nola does come out and have a lead season, but I think he's gonna have a good year. But I think this is the year it feels like Zach Wheeler's getting the ball on opening day, by the way, not Nola mm-hmm. this year. I, it just feels like it's a Zach Wheeler year. So I'm going Luis Castillo, American League from the Mariners, and the National League, I'm going Zach Wheeler from the Philadelphia Phillies. Let's go with yours. 
I like him. I, I like your picks a lot. Uh, so I'll start in the AL. I'm staying in the AL East. Mm. I, you know, I got to go Corbin Burns, man. Corbin Burns is going to win Cy Young for the Orioles. I, he's, he's traded to Baltimore. I think he's going to excel there. He's the number one guy. Um, he's gotten close before. I think this is <laughs> Corbin Burns' year in Baltimore. It just feels like a Baltimore year. They, they're, you know, they're a ascending team. They're a young team. And, you know, I know I, I joke. But I really, I really think Baltimore's gonna have a good year. Corbin Burns is gonna lead the way. His stuff is just nasty. I think in the AL, this is his to take, um, especially when he has that offense behind him as well. I, I, I like Corbin Burns, man. I think he's gonna be shut down uh, for the Orioles this year. He's gonna be my pick in the AL. Now, I think my, I, you know, I think that's kind of an easy pick for me with with the Corbin Burns thing in the Orioles, right? Now I want to switch to the NL. Love the Zach Wheeler pick. I'm going someone who's had a pretty good couple of years. Uh, you know, he, he went to the World Series last year. Uh, didn't win the World Series, but he was in it. And the Phillies know who this is. Uh, he's a local kid uh, from South Jersey. Zach Gallon's going to win uh, the Cy Young next year or this coming year for the Arizona Diamondbacks. Uh, he's, you know, he's had a really, really good career, career 3.21 ERA. I had an all-star level season last year, won 17 games. I know you don't care about wins, but I think this is the year he, you know, he pitched the most innings he ever pitched last year, 210 innings. Um, I think he's a guy to watch out for Had over 200 strikeouts last season. I think he's even better this year for the Arizona Diamondbacks. Um, I really like where he's at. He's going to go into his age 28 season. I think Zach Gallons in, is primed for a really, really big year for the Arizona Diamondbacks. His ERA went up a little bit above three last year. I think it comes back down under three. I think you're going to see it at probably around like 275 or something like that. But I think Zach Gallon has a monster year for the Arizona Diamondbacks. Um, he's got incredible, incredible stuff. Be able to locate his pitch as well this year. Um, I, yeah, Zach Gallon is going to be my guy, my pick for the NL Cy Young Award. I, I like your picks. I like your picks a lot. Um, by the way, I don't know how many people have done it. So Blake Snell's won uh, Cy Youngs in both leagues. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think of who else has recently. I, I uh, does Verlander? No, no, Verlander do with the yeah, uh, I don't no, Verlander so. do with no, Verlander with the Astros and the Tigers. Um, I'm just trying to think who else has won Cy Youngs in both leagues because if Burns does it, he's, he'd be doing yeah, he'd both be this, leagues. Yeah, both leagues. Um, I can't really think of it right now, but it doesn't matter. Um, so that would be that would be big time. Um, not mad at those picks. I like them. Uh, Gallon um, has been, you know, one of the. I think he's been underrated too a little bit, a little bit, a little yeah, bit. But people I saw think, him yeah. in, uh, in the playoffs last year, so I think he's uh, he's kind of on people's radar now. Yep. Um, rookie of the year. Uh, I'll let you go first here, and then uh, I'll go second. So give me yep. your picks. So uh, also, I wanted to add Max Scherzer, Roy Halladay, Roger Clemens, Randy yes. Johnson, Pedro Martinez, Gaylord Perry were the ones who have won the Cy Young in both leagues. Right. Good, good call. Yeah. Yep. So also, all right, moving to Rookie of the Year. All right, so for me, I got to stick with the theme here. Jackson Holiday is going to win Rookie of the Year. He's he, not, gets, he didn't make the team. I know he didn't make the team. He's going to get called up. Eventually. He's going to get called up. He's going to get called up. Hey, like August, this. he's going to hit like, what, 30 home no, runs in no, August? No, no, oh, stop, stop. He's there, he up. Whoa, there he goes. There he goes. The Orioles fry. He's a fan. Whoa, he's an Orioles whoa, fan. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I know he didn't make the team. You don't have to make the opening day roster to qualify for Rookie of the Year. He's going to get called up at some point. He's going to be doing so well in AAA. He's going to qualify for the Rookie of the Year voting, and he is going to run away with it. That is a superstar in the making. Jackson Holiday is a superstar in the making. We already talked about how he's already married. He's got a mansion already. I mean, he's doing better than me and you. He's, he's way younger than, than you and I. I got to go Jackson Holiday. Jackson Holiday is going to win the Rookie of the Year. He's going to come up. They're going to call him up at some point. I'd say probably like May ish that's when they'll call jackson holiday up um i expect him to be in the big leagues this year jackson holiday wins the rookie of the year he comes out of of the minor leagues he puts on a show for the orioles has a really really great season just mashes the baseball throughout the rest of the year al rookie of the year that's my guy jackson holiday superstar in the make i don't care if he's not on the roster yet he's gonna win it eventually that's where i'm going all right and then for the nl I'm going to go to the West Coast. Um, I think the newest signing, uh, the South Korean outfielder for the San 
Francisco Giants, who signed a six-year, $113 million deal. Jung Hu Lee, 25-year-old center fielder. Uh, he was insane in the Korean Baseball League. Uh, he had an over 340 batting average uh, career in Korea, 65 home runs, 69 stolen bases. Uh, this, this is a guy who won an MVP in that league in 2022. I think he comes over here, has a really good season for San Francisco. San Francisco's made a bunch of signings to try and compete with the Dodgers. I don't think they don't win the division. I think they can get into the playoffs. We talked about it. They're right around that wild card spot. I We think they'll compete. I think Jungwoo Lee is going to win in the National League. I think he has a monster year. He comes over and is really successful here uh, in Major League Baseball. So he's 25 years old. I think he puts up uh, some big numbers uh, as a rookie over here. I think he wins NL Rookie of the Year. Yeah, I, yeah. Let me let me pull a Nick Arnshaw real quick. Oh yeah, Nick Abel's gonna come up in August. He's gonna win. He's gonna win NL Cy Young. That's what he's gonna do. I'm just kidding. I'm sorry. I had to make Jackson of Holiday is oh, like the I number one it, prospect call up in, in September. So he called up in Not September. Gonna he's gonna hit a hundred. He's gonna hit. He's gonna pull Johan Rojas. He's gonna hit ninety two. Uh, no, anyway. stop. 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 Come on. I like Jackson Holiday. Just... He looked great. He looked good in the spring, man. He looked really good. He looked really he looked good. good. You know who looked better? I ain't gonna lie. Who you know who looked better? Look I know you said don't go with uh, the easy pick, oh. but he's exciting, man. Not Evan Carter. Relax. I'm not saying, I know. I know who you're gonna. There's pick. two I know guys gonna... in the Rangers, and the second I guy is White Langford. My God, that kid's it's gonna. Yeah, kick he's gonna match. match. Yeah, he's he can match. match. I know. I know he can respect match. on White Langford's name. An excited top pick in the draft last season. He's ready. I'm ready. To, he's 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 got the confidence. He's got the swagger. He's got the play. He's ready. What do you want? Is this our new Ellie versus Corbin this year? Jackson, Jackson versus, versus Wyatt? Fine. Yeah, you want it to be that way? <laughs> I'm going to win again. No. O'Neal Cruz is going to get win MVP this year probably. He yeah. looks good this spring he too. Does. He looks really yeah, good. Who's the better Cruz, O'Neal or Ellie? Who will have the better career? I'm a, I might. We might do that. We might do that topic. Who's going to have a better career just for just for the heck of it? O'Neal Cruz or Ellie? Maybe I'll do a video on it. Maybe I don't need you. I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> no, you need me. You need me to re- <laughs> Rebuke anything we you say. We could do a collab video. We've never done a collab video, yeah. I don't think. Maybe we could we'll, do a collab, short idea. collab video. We could do idea. that. That's yeah. an idea. O'Neal versus Ellie. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, you're killing me. You're All killing right. Me so, anyway. Same division. My- wait, wait, same division, too, by the way. Yes. Oh, look at that. Maybe it comes out like the last day of the season. Where do the where do the Reds and Pirates play on the schedule? That's, I don't know. Well, hey, Maybe the we, Pirates are an interesting one. Pirates we take a trip. Is this a shift road trip I'm hearing? <laughs> Yeah, yo, I, I mean, I'd be down. Pittsburgh? I wouldn't be down. I wouldn't. Yeah. I wouldn't be mad. You're you're going to Madison Square Garden and all that stuff. So yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. come on, we're going everywhere. Um, all right, so I'm gonna take Wyatt Langford from okay. the American League and the National League. I'm gonna take Kyle Harrison uh, from yeah. the Giants. I think that Blake Snell, that signing, um, gives uh, takes a little bit of pressure off of his shoulders. He is a top prospect. For the Giants, but I think Logan Webb, big time. Blake Snell, big time. Robbie Ray coming back midseason, big time. He's one of Cy Young. He's somebody yeah. uh, that we're going to be looking back on his career, saying he had a good yeah. career. Kind of like I'm saying about Luis Castillo there. Um, but I think that Kyle Harrison, um, he is going to be somebody this year that I can think can uh, kind of um, – when, when the rookie of the year this year, I think he can have a good year. Maybe not the type of year Kodai Senga had last year. Uh, but I, I think Kyle Harrison is somebody that I can see winning rookie of the year in the National League. Got any uh, thoughts there? No, I, I, I think they're both fair picks. I mean, I can't hate on the Y Langford thing. I can't. He's the favorite for a reason. I like it. I think when Jackson comes up, he just, you know, he starts to creep up in those sta- in those things and those yeah, odds. September when he gets called down, up, the last. When he gets called up. Jackson Holiday will be the uh, rookie of the year, but no, I like the white line for Pitt. I think he's going to mash the baseball. I, I I think he's going to be ridiculous. That's a superstar in the making. Uh, great pick there. I think Kyle Harrison, another guy who definitely could win. Um, I don't know what his odds are. I can't remember exactly. Pull it up real quick for the NL. Um, yeah, so he he's plus fourteen hundred in most most places. Um, you know, Michael Bush is ahead of him, Jackson Merrill, another guy who's in that conversation. So, um, I, you know, rookie of the year is kind of a tough one to, to gauge, uh, heading into the season. You never know with some of these young players, um, how they're going to pan out. Um, so I, I think Kyle Harrison, really good pick. We both went with giants, which is pretty crazy. Um, mm-hmm. I, I like that, um, yeah, a point. lot, but, um, I, I think they're, they're two reasonable picks. You know, you went with the safe, easy options, which is fine. 
which is great. Oh, Good for you. We want some relax. safe options. There. Evan Carr is like the. By the way, Evan Carr is like the favorite to win well, rookie of the year. Uh, he's no. Why Langford's the favorite? Is he? Yeah. According to most Evan Carter yeah. at one point. Evan Carter's right behind him. Yeah, Evan Carter's right behind him, but. Yeah. All right. So. Well, you're, maybe you're right. I don't know. I well, Evan Carter in my book is the favorite, even though technically I have Wyatt Langford winning. Just it goes what, my argument. So on most books, it's Wyatt Langford, Evan Carter, then Jackson Holiday. For okay, for yeah. Your, so you pick an easy pick too. So relax. All right. Uh, <laughs> anyway, um, all right. So let's get to uh, top opening day starting pitching matchups because I think uh-huh. there are some uh, exciting starting pitching matchups. Um, I'll give you. I'll give you one. Then you give me one. Uh, I'm going to go the easy route for the mm-hmm. first one because I can. Zach Wheeler and Spencer yeah. Strider. I know you probably I mean, have that one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, you know, it's easy. Spencer Strider, one of the most young, exciting any baseball players in general. Um, and, uh, you know, I think he added a new pitch this uh, this this spring. Yeah, I, I, hit, I did hear that. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know if it's that. a slider or what he added. Um, but um, he, he's got a new pitch. So maybe that wins him a Cy Young. I don't know. Uh, we'll see. Maybe this is a battle for who's going to win the Cy Young this year. Yep. Zach Wheeler and Spencer Strider. But I like Strider and Wheeler on the mound for the Phils and the Braves. Who you got for me? Yeah, I I, I think I think it's the best matchup across the board. Yeah, I think, I think that's no, no, doubt. no doubt. No doubt. No yeah. doubt. It's going to be unreal, whether it's Thursday or Friday. Um, all right. I got to go Yankees-Astros for me. Uh, that's where I got to go. Um, Nestor Cortez against Framber. Valdez uh, for the Houston Astros. So Nestor Cortez in the spot of Garrett Cole. Um, you know, Garrett Cole out with the injury right now. Uh, Cortez a lot of, missed a lot of last season with injury, right? He only had 12 starts, mm-hmm. had uh, above a four ERA, wasn't very good, injured. But 2022, really good. He had 28 starts, 244 ERA. Um, so he was really good. Maybe we see him get back to form. Very intrigued by this matchup. And then, obviously, Framber Valdez, really good pitcher. This is a third straight opening day start for the Astros. Um, so I think this is a great matchup. Yankees are expected to be back into that mix, right? I don't know how good they'll be, but they're going to be back into the mix this year. where They got to stay healthy. They're already off to a bad start with Garrett Cole being out. But I, Cortez, if he can get back to that 2022 form, I think this is an intriguing, intriguging matchup on opening day. Uh, it'll be fun, uh, a fun one uh, for the Astros and Yankees. Mm, I, you know what I'm going to do here? I'm going to do another one. I'm going to go okay. someone you didn't, wouldn't expect to start because he's been a reliever for the yeah. Chicago White Sox, but he was named yeah. opening day starter. Garrett Crochet. Okay. On one side. Now, he's yeah. intriguing. He's like a, he looks like Randy Johnson a little bit. Yeah. With the height, he came height over, he came nasty. over the cease trade, right? Was he over, he came over, was it the cease trade or because of the cease trade, right? He That's why recently. He yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. No, no, Crochet's been, yeah. been there. He's been there, been there for a while. Oh, wow. And then, yeah, he, he moved up, right? Yeah. yeah, crochet. He's he's had a lot of potential. I just think um, I don't know if health has been the issue or what it's been. Yeah. But uh, Garrett Crochet, Tarek Scubel, someone who you mentioned uh, earlier, we both mentioned. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But I think that's an intriguing matchup. If you look at okay. Tarek Scubel's cool. numbers uh, over his last thirty-five to thirty-six starts, so over a full season of work, um, has about an ERA just over three. He's been really good. And Crochet is somebody I just really like to watch him pitch. Somebody with stuff like that. His fastball slider combination is just disgusting. He can give you a hundred, 101, and then he can give you a slide piece right across, uh, you know, right across the play. It just looks nasty. It's impossible to hit. So I'm, I'm, I'm curious to see, um, what he's going to do, um, as an opening day starter. So crochet and Scooble is my other one. You give me, want to give me another one? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll pull up another one here. I, there was a, there was a couple I was looking at. Um, I got to go. So, Corbin Burns against Patrick Sandoval. Patrick Sandoval gets uh, – he's succeeding Shohei Otani for the Angels. So I'm not even looking at Burns. Obvious, that's all an obvious that one. pressure. But yeah, all that pressure. After Otani leaves, now all, all of a sudden, uh, I think that's a good one. Um, so we'll, we'll see how, how that rolls out. I don't expect the Angels to do very much this year. But he's the first Angels left-handed pitcher, according to MLB.com, left-handed pitcher since 2009 to start on opening day since Joe Saunders. Mm. Joe yeah. Saunders, look at that name. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, okay, we shall. We're getting to the hour mark here, so let's close mm-hmm. out the show. I need, I need from you, bro. I need a bold prediction for 2024. Go ahead. Say Jackson Holiday's going to hit 50 home runs. Say Colton Cowser's going to win the, the American League. Uh, all, he's going to make the all-MLB team. 
What are you going to do? Go ahead. I'm going with my other one. My other guy. Ellie De La Cruz. Ellie De La Cruz. He wins NL MVP, right? No. No. 50 plus stolen bases for Ellie De La Cruz this year. Okay. Yeah. That's my that's my bold prediction. Is that bold though? I mean, like I think it's bold. Do you want me to go 60? I'll go 60. 60 plus for, Go 90. For <laughs> not cool, dude, how many whoa, how many bases did he steal last year over over 90 games? I think he had I'm like going 20, 25. I'll go 60 for you. I'll go yeah. 60 for no, you. No, do whatever you want. I'm just I'm just I'll curious. He had 35 stolen bases in hundred games. Yeah. yeah, let's go, man. 50. Oh, 60? Come on. 60. Better than we'll that. go 60. Come on, we'll go better 60. than that. Uh, we'll go okay, 60. fine. That's okay, fine. Boring, but fine. You fine. were boring though. You picked all the easy <laughs> picks today. I don't want to. No, hear I it. did not. I said Garrett Crochet and Terrence Kubel. <laughs> Get out of here. Well, I said okay. Fernando Tati Jr. for NL MVP. Get out of here. Yeah, 60 stolen bases and a division win for, for the Reds. Fine. Yeah. yeah. Congratulations. Congratulations, Ellie De La Cruz. And uh, I was also hoping for more like a Ricky Anderson, 100 stolen bases, something like that. <laughs> I was thinking about the stolen base thing. I was thinking about, will someone steal like, but it had to be like 100. I needed that. Yeah, Esther I mean, Ruiz, 67 last year. Acuna, 70 plus. 70. Right? I don't think Ellie gets to 70. I don't know if he gets to 70. I mean, I'll say 60. Sure. We'll go 60. We'll go 60. Okay. Well, yeah, you better get I'll, on I'll base and better than a 250 clip. So, yeah, you better hope he. <laughs> you better hope your boy. So that's why it's a bold prediction, man. Yeah. It's a bold prediction. I'm gonna go for mine. <laughs> I'm gonna stick with the Yankees here. Okay. Uh, what am I gonna do here? Uh, do I want to say it? Say All right. It. All right. Aaron Judge and Juan Soto will combine this year for at least a, uh, not at least. I'm gonna say 100 home runs. Okay. I'm gonna say. I'm okay. gonna say Judge. It's like 55. It's big okay. time. Yeah, it's big time. I'm going to say Juan Soto has like a monster, 40, and you 40. won't ever see him hit at least this many home runs again, like 45 homers. Okay. He's never like done it. that. I think his career high was last year with 35. What? I like so, it. Uh, yeah, that's bold for you, buddy. I like it. Yeah. Eh. Eh, it's eh. not crazy bold. Relax. But, yes, it's, well, it's just bold. Yeah, I think we could have been bolder. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, you could have been bolder, but yeah. yeah we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. 60 plus for, for Ellie. 60 plus stolen base. Okay. All right. Well, 100, 100 home runs for Judd and Soto. Maybe uh, I mean, it would have been maybe a little bit more intriguing if we'd said, oh, ja, Judge breaks Barry Bonds with 75 yeah, home runs. Soto hits yeah. 25 and 100 home runs that way. <laughs> All right. All right. 160, 160. Okay. Great job. Okay. Here we go. See you. All right. Well, uh, let us know. Let us know. I didn't put my Twitter name there because I'm not a fraud. Hey, new Twitter handle, by the way. Yeah, go follow and Nick. New Twitter handle, new Instagram handle, and TikTok. All three. Yes. I think I got to change the bottom down here, too. By the way, Joe Von Alford, he was a, uh, he's, uh, you know, uh, uh, he was a guest here on the show and yeah. will be again at some point. What are, he you just, uh, what are you yeah, live tweeted, tweeting? Yeah, I, I tweeted that you're this. a fraud. Oh. Uh, you're an Orioles fan. And he responded with this. Look at that. I, I just, I just saw it. Wow. That's fantastic. That's a great picture. I got. I I'm gonna save spot. that for you. I'm gonna save that. All I got is a little oh. soft spot for the Orioles here. Yeah. Sorry, I'll have my Phillies jersey on during the World Series. It's all good. Okay. All good. Yeah, we all know you're an Orioles fan now. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna tweet out that picture. Well, actually, technically, uh, what are you gonna uh, take it from him? No, nah, I'm not gonna do that. But like, <laughs> I, I will, I will save it, and I will credit Jovan every time I do it <laughs> going forward. That's a fantastic picture. I love okay. that. That is hilarious. Yeah, that's okay. that's that's you. That's your face. Damn, that's like a, a spinning image of you. Yeah, yeah. Come up to the camera. Look at the camera. Let's see your face. That's you. Say hello. No, I'm not saying chirp. Hello. Chirp. I'm not an Orioles fan. I'm not an Orioles fan. <laughs> I enjoy the youngsters. I got to see them come through the minors, and I enjoy them. Right. Yes, yeah, so you maybe. enjoy them as a fan. Right. We're out of here, baby. The Shift, episode 49, our Knicks and Orioles fan. We're going to talk to you guys soon when we wrap up the opening day weekend. Goodbye.